you're remodeling your bathroom, right? And you just unscrew the old tub drain and you've bought a new tub drain from the big box stores like Home Depot or Lowe's. And guess what? No matter what you've tried, it won't thread in. It's not the right size. Even using the adapter that they give you, it won't go in and it won't fit. What are you going to do? Well, in this video, we're gonna show you DIY style, folks, how you're gonna fix this yourself. You're going to solve this problem on your own and save yourself three or $400 or even more on calling a plumber to come in and make this fix. Okay, so make sure you hang out and watch this video all the way to the end, folks, because we're gonna show you some bonus tips and some tools that you should be using, the proper tools to use when doing this, and the tools that you should be avoiding so that you don't either damage the tool or damage your drain. Okay, so now we're going to put our engineering hats on and we're gonna do about five minutes of some really easy engineering. And you're gonna be like, oh my gosh, Jeff, I can't believe it was that easy. Some plumbers are gonna tell that they wanna change out the entire overflow kit here because then they can put in a whole new drain with it and then that solves the problem. Okay, so now what do we do to this drain so that we make it look exactly like this tub drain right here with the exact same threading? I'll show you, it's actually very easy. Don't drive all over the county looking for plumbing supply houses that might have this part that nobody carries anymore. You're not going to find it. The best thing for you to do is to find the correct bushing to screw onto your new drain that will match the threads on this drain. Understand? Let's do it. Okay, engineers, now there's just four simple pieces of information that we need here from this drain. We need to measure this here, how tall is it with the threads. We also need to know the inside diameter of the opening here. And we also need to know the outside diameter of the threads. And lastly, we need to calculate threads per inch. Very easy to do, so we'll show you how to do it. Okay, so we're going to do what we call here a gauge measurement. So we're going to measure that inside diameter and we're just going to put our digital caliper right across the inside. I call it the throat. Okay, so the gauge is telling us that this right here, the interior diameter there is one and a half inches. So this tells us that our threads are probably going to bring us up to one and seven eighths on the outer diameter. So we need to measure that next. Okay, so there we are. We're at about one and seven eighths approximately. If I tighten it down, it might just go, you know, a couple of 30 seconds difference. It's, it's okay. Okay, next we're gonna measure the height, the beginning of the threads to the end. And that looks to be about an inch or so. A little bit, little bit difficult to tell, but yeah, we're, we're pretty much right around an inch. Okay, what you're going to do now is get a very well lit level as you can head on shot edge on showing all of the threads. okay now to calculate our threads per inch it's a simple mathematical equation here folks it's usually you have a one inch height here so it's whatever threads you count here like if we count 14 threads then we know we have 14 threads per inch 14 tpi okay so i made this slide here to give you a, a great understanding at a glance here of what's happening with tub drains so as you look here the two common u.s drain shoe sizes for your tub drains are here you have the one and three inch inner diameter tub drain shoe and see remember the industry this is what makes it so confusing the industry and the plumbers usually look at the inside diameter of the the threaded drains right so so one and three inches is how they call it now most di wires will grab this drain and they're looking at the outside diameter thinking oh i have a one and five eighths inch outer diameter so this is the way they were in the uh, older years so if you have an older tub you're most likely looking at this here and so with the threads being an eighth of an inch on either side it adds a quarter of an inch total so if you have an inside diameter of one and three eighths inch your outside is one and five eighths the newer modern tubs now are in the one and a half inch inner diameter size for your tub drain shoe. And then here with the 1 8 inch threads, that adds a quarter of an inch to it. And now you're looking at 1 and 7 8 inch outer diameter. So I hope this explains it all clearly for you as to the main different types. Now there are other sizes, but they're very rare. These are the two common sizes you see. When you pull your old tub flange drain, whatever you want to call it, out of the tub, and you know, it looks like this, right? When you pull that out, and if it's 1 and 3 8 inch, the package will usually have an adapter in there that adapts it to the bigger size here that you screw it on so it will fit in the modern tub size of one and a half inches. Okay, so this is the standard tub drain that we normally buy from Home Depot. So let's take a look at this and see why it doesn't fit. And we'll show you the strategy that we need to employ here. Okay. So if your tub has the smaller hole, which is what this is, this will screw right in. If you have a, the larger hole size, then you have to screw on this bushing that Danco gives you in the package, and now you'll fit inside the larger hole. 
that works 90% of the time. Okay, so here's our old drain that we pulled out on the right, and you can see, you can see the, the threads there, but look at the threads on here when you put the adapter on, which looks like these are probably about 11 and a half. These look to be about 14, so you know they're not going to match. You know that this drain will not screw into the shoe hole of the bathtub to replace this older drain. Okay, so here we are now that we've taken our photograph with it, and now what we want to do is measure our threads. And so we're looking here at 14 threads, and I'll show you how I usually like to count. I'll, I'll try to find the bottommost one, which is right here. And I find it easier to put it against a light background and count the teeth that you see there. So I'm going to start with this first one on the bottom is one, and then two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and this last one is 14. And, you know, I see this other one trying to start, but there's really no thread on it. So you can try counting the lines as well as a sanity check. Here we have collected up all of the parameters that we need here on our drain. This is the way engineers characterize things. This is what you need to do in order to buy the correct bushing for this drain. So we know here's our, here is our four parameters. We have 14 threads, so we're 14 threads per inch. We're 14 TPI. We know this thing's an inch, so that was very easy math there. And our inside diameter is one and a half inches, and our outside diameter is one and seven eighths inches. So now let's go find the correct bushing. Here's the new Danco drain right next to our old drain that we pulled out. And the new Danco drain has the new bushing that we need to order. And so that's why we're trying to show you here. We need to make the brand new Danco tub drain shoe on the left look exactly like the one on the right, or it will not thread in. So which bushing do we need to order then? So fortunately, Watco makes these bushings that you can adapt to these tub drain shoes. And they have different styles you can get here, and they paint them with a colored stripe so you know what you're getting. It looks overwhelming. How do you know which one to get? because you could blow it. We're going to order two. The first one that we order is going to be correct. I'm going to make sure it's everything that everything matches all of our parameters. The other one is going to be slightly off because I want to show you what happens if your numbers go south. So let's go back for a second here. Okay, so here's the Danco drain kit that you would see on Home Depot or Lowe's or any of the other stores. And when you come down to look at those details down below, this will fit a tub shoe diameter of one and a half inches right there with 16 threads per inch. And then that little white plastic adapter that comes with it has an outside diameter of one and seven eighths inches, and it has a thread count of 11 and a half threads. So this is what the modern tub threads will accommodate. Now here, everything they're referring to is outer diameter because that's what the DIYers refer to. What they're really telling you is it fits an inside diameter of one and three eighths or an inside diameter of one and a half inches. All right, so here on the Home Depot website, I think they have an error. I don't think that should say one and a half inch. It should say it fits a one and three eighths inch or it fits a one and a half inch drain shoe size. Okay. Uh, but if they want to say one and seven eighths, that's fine. But this one needs to say one and five eighths if they're going to play that game. Do the outside diameter, that needs to say one and five eighths. And sure enough, when we measure things, we're correct. And you need to have this number correct because that's the inside diameter of the bushing. So that's what can lead you down the wrong path in choosing the wrong bushing. Okay, so we'll put links to all of these in the video description below for you. Keep in mind, folks, anytime we give you links to Amazon and Home Depot and other websites, we are usually paid a small commission anytime you buy like these parts from those websites. And we thank you so much for supporting our channel because that is what helps us to continue to bring you more content and to buy more tools for our tool giveaways. See, so coming back here to our bushing list, it converts from 1.6 inch. This is what we're looking for. It says 1.6 inch and 16 threads. That's what we're looking for. Right there, you see this? Converts the outside diameter of the body threads. We currently have from Danco that 1.6 inches, which is basically, that is one and five eighths. It's 1.625, right? And we know we have 16 threads on their drain. So we know we need to convert that to one and seven eighths inches wide outer diameter. See, here's the outer diameter of those threads and 14 right here that you see. So which one of these There's a few here that are 14. So which one is it going to be? So far, I'm looking as our best candidate would be this blue one right here. It says the blue stripe. So that we already know matches what the Danco has on the inside of it. Now the outside of it says 1.8 with 14 threads. That was 1.8 correct. 
and one let me go what seven eighths is seven eighths one point there plus one so we should be looking for 1.875 here we have 1.8 Here's another one here. This is 1.9 inch with 14 threads. So they look pretty close. Like which one's closer? Should I go with the 1.8 or should I go with the uh, 1.9? They both look like they're pretty much close to that. So I'm going to pick both of these. I'm going to pick the orange one and I'm going to pick the blue one here. But you're going to see when they come in why one of these is going to be off and why it won't work. Even though they both look like they have the almost exactly the same specs. So once you've narrowed down which one you need to get, you can order them on Home Depot. So we'll put the link to this particular search where it's narrowed down for you. And they don't seem to have every one of them. So if you run into a case where they don't have it at Home Depot, then as you can see here, you have no choice. You got to go to Watco's website to buy it. And here they, they show you all the part numbers here from that table that we were looking at before. So you know which one to order. Okay, the moment of truth has arrived, folks. So from Home Depot, I just got this box today. And what this is, is this is my Watco bushing that I ordered that will replace this bushing. And hopefully we calculate it correctly and we'll screw it on and it will adapt right into the bathtub. So let's take a look at it. All right, so here's the new bushing on the left, the old one on the right. And when you look at them side by side, you know the threads look the same this is this is always the nervous part for us like is it gonna fit is it gonna work or not and not only that will the inside of this screw on to the outside of our new drain here so let's test it out okay so here you go here's our moment of truth you're gonna see and there it is look at that oh yeah baby okay but we've only got the first half of the equation right so here we are now, if I did my calculations correctly, folks, this Home Depot bathtub drain with this Watco bushing that I ordered should be equal to this now, the old hub drain that we pulled out. Okay, now let me show you a little hack you can do when you're trying to screw in two finely threaded pieces of metal like this. If at first you have a hard time with it going in, here's what you do. Put the metal on. If at first it doesn't start threading, back it up counterclockwise. Do you feel how it clicked in? It just clicked into place. Now you can start threading it. Okay, so here's the other bushing, the blue stripe. This is the one that's the 1.8 outer diameter. So this is the one that actually, when you see it on top of the old drain, is this one looks very close and it looks like the threads are going to go perfect. It might be just a teeny, teeny bit small, but I think this will still fit. Here's the bigger one, the orange stripe, the 1.9. You can see it's slightly larger, so I don't think this is going to fit. And not only that, because it has a wider outer diameter, I believe this is going to throw off the pitch of the threads and that it will not thread in properly. Here you can see all three of the bushings stacked up here. I feel like we're on an episode of The Bachelorette. You know, will you accept this rose? Which one do we offer the rose to, folks? So it looks like it's probably going to be that blue stripe. So let's give it a try. See, so look at that. It's exactly one and seven eighths. So that's what we need the opening to be. See, because that matches the dimension of our old drain, one and seven eighths inches. Okay, so let's go try our new tub drain along with our new bushing with the blue stripe on it and let's see if that works. Remember, this is the original Danco drain that we bought from Home Depot. The bushing that comes with it, the plastic bushing, did not work. So we have our two engineering solutions here. Remember the orange stripe one and the blue stripe. We're going to see which one works. So we'll try the orange stripe first. So, so this was the 1.9 inch that we figured should be the one that'll work. So let's see if this one does the job. Okay, so we've shown that this one won't thread in. This is only about maybe goes in maybe three threads or so before it stops, it gives up. Okay, so now this is the Watco bushing that we think is going to work, this drain bushing. And so we're going to screw this one on here. So let's try it out. And let me remind you again, folks, this is just a dry fitting. You still need to use the plumber's putty, but we're just making sure that this goes all the way down. So what do you think, folks? Does it look like we're going to pull this off? Does it look like it's going to make it? Can we do this? Can. Whoa! Oh. Good, good. So we can see that our drain goes all the way down. So now we can go ahead and apply our plumber's putty, install it the correct way. And we also want to investigate whether we want to put in that new gasket. Now there is a gasket right here. It's just kind of pushed out of the way. Okay, now don't make this mistake. A lot of people erroneously think that you put the gasket on there. That's not what you're supposed to do. That's not what that gasket is for. Because first of all, if you were gonna screw this on, by time you screw this all the way down flat, it's gonna make this gasket bunch up and ooze out and everything. And that's why people have leaks. They don't realize this 
It's supposed to go in this slot underneath here, see? Remember, as we screw this into place, it's going to draw up the shoe and compress against the black gasket. You want to make sure that you see that plumber's putty coming oozing out evenly all the way around there. Okay, now to tighten it, some people will use a screwdriver. You can do it like that. You can also use robo grips or channel lock pliers as well and tighten it this way. See? Now I'm not taking any chances, folks. I'm going to come back around here with some clear silicone just to make sure that that whole area here is sealed because if anything gets under there and gets past the plumber's putty and gets past that black gasket, we could have water underneath the tub. Sealing it here, I'm guaranteed that all the water that comes down here is going to go down the throat of that drain. Okay, now as I mentioned earlier, there's the correct tools to use and the incorrect tools. I'm gonna to show you the correct tool to use first. So this is what we call a tub drain wrench. And I'm going to put links to all of this, these parts and tools that we're talking about here in the video description below. The way this works is this goes down into the drain and it fits around all the spokes. Turn the drain like that. It's a $10 tool. So you can see that as the drain wrench enters your drain, do you see how those four sections are all perfectly shaped at the proper angles here to line up directly so that it goes face to face with each edge of those spokes? See that? There's no sharp edges pointing into the spoke. That's the perfection of the design of this drain wrench. And this is why this is what you should be using. Okay, now what's really ironic is when you look on the packaging from Danco and you look at the instructions on the back, they actually show a picture of pliers. And what's even more stupid is they're actually showing it like this end. I'm like, well, first of all, this end would never ever uh, work on any drain even this is the big ones forget about the little one. probably you might be able to get this end to work on the bigger drains like this you can see once you see how it's gripping the drain why this is an inappropriate tool to use because unlike the drain wrench that you saw had the four different parts that come in there and made up perfectly against the spoke this one here just mates up at the spoke with a sharp corner and if you exert a lot of force on one of these drains that's old and rusty, you're going to shear through all of those center hub spokes here. And now what are you going to do? How are you going to get your drain out then? And we got a lot of arrogant, mean comments from people saying, you're stupid, you don't use pliers, you're supposed to use needle nose pliers. Here's why you're not supposed to use these either. So all of those arrogant people were wrong. If you take these needle nose and you have this sharp edge up against the spoke, folks of the drain you run the risk of shearing through i've received comments from people who've told me that they've either destroyed their needle nose pliers or they've sheared through the hub and now they're desperate now what do i do so if you shear through the hub of your drain folks because you were trying to save ten dollars on buying the correct tool for the job now you got to go spend 25 dollars on this tool which is a tub drain extractor so this tub drain extractor is what you use to remove difficult drain so in this case here if you use the needle nose pliers and st instead of four perfectly shaped pushing surfaces you only have two and they're not perfectly shaped you're going to push a sharp edge on the corner of that needle nose and it's going to shear right through if you have an older rusty drain spoke on top of that you can see how awkward it is to get a good grip with your hands spread wide like this to try to hold it, either break the tool or they break this. Or some people will get a huge wrench, like a channel lock wrench, and really exert too much pressure on the tool. Let's say you use your needle nose ply. If you can't get that thing to move, then don't continue to use the tool. Stop what you're doing and go and get the right proper tool to use, which is the tub drain wrench. Now, as I promised you earlier, I have a backup solution in case everything else failed. So what we do here is this is the old drain, right? So instead of throwing out the old drain, you're going to reuse it. You're going to screw it right back in place. And Watco makes this closure brass stopper. It's like an adapter piece, which is basically nothing more than a face plate. It's just putting a facade on something that's already bad like this. See? Well, before you leave here, make sure you check out these other two playlists we've got here. This one here is for all of our bathroom remodeling, and this other one here is additional plumbing tips that will help you out. And if you're not subscribed, make sure you do that by clicking on that subscribe button down below. It's free. That way you don't miss out on any of our future videos like these that give you great content. So thank you so much for joining us today, folks, and we will see you on the next one.